Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can use some of the dynamic EQ features to create some kind of like movement or tame some resonances using M cabinets. So before I talked about the profiles and the you know resonances and all that kind of thing, but in the equalizer, I think maybe some people aren't aware that it's actually a dynamic EQ. So depending upon the input level, you can actually adjust whether it compresses uh, the sound or it expands it, and you can do it at a specific frequency. So let me show you how. So here we have just a example, a clean example. I'll play it. Okay, we have that looped. And so I like that, but I noticed like some of the high end or the upper mids are a little bit harsh on some hits. So let's see if we can tame that. So I'll open one of these bands. Let's try three, I guess. And let's kind of move this around to try to find out where that sound's coming in. Let me bring this down because I'm going to have to boost it. So what you want to do is just boost this up and just kind of sweep around until you find the area that doesn't sound that good to you. So this area here, let's see, I don't know what, uh, I guess like around 2,500, that sounds a little bit harsh. So we're going to bring that down. So one thing we could do is just, you know, do this, but I don't want this to happen all the time. I only want it to happen on the really strong hits. So we'll move that to zero and right click it. So here I can go, if it's not on zero, just right click it and we'll move it back. I have the cue set about where I want it now. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to play it and I'm going to adjust some of the settings. Actually, before I do that, look here at the RMS length. I usually like to move that down a little bit, around like one or so, but you can do that however you like. Peak hold seems okay. Uh, the release, I like to move this around like 100, but experiment for yourself to see what you like. And the two things I really need to take care of are the dynamics. So by going to the right, it's going to increase the dynamics, so that means every time it hits, it's going to increase the volume. But if I move it to the left, it's going to decrease the volume. So I think I want to do maybe around like 6 dBs or so. And here you see the threshold's all the way down. I don't want that. If the threshold's all the way down, that means for any time there's noise, it's going to create a lots of uh, you know gain reduction. So what I want to do is play this and then move it down. So on the hard hits, it's decreasing the volume a lot. But on the uh, lighter hits, it's not. So let's play it, loop it, and adjust the threshold. So there we go. We have it and we've actually decreased it. So we can check it if we want to now. So I'll just close this. Let me move the output back up so it's a little bit louder. And so you can turn this wet dry off like this and now it'll turn everything off. So this is the before. So you hear that before and after. So it sounds a little bit more tame. And of course you can increase this if I make the dynamics like this, it'll do even more. So you can see that that's doing a lot if I have, you know, like 19 decibels, but I usually like to keep it around, you know, four to maybe 10 decibels or so. But adjust this however you feel it. Uh, there's other things you can change in here. So for this, I usually want to keep the channels linked, but you don't have to. So this will move the right and left channels uh, in the same manner. But if I do this, it'll move them independently. And here is filter compensated. That means it's only going to detect the area uh, where the filter is at three. So it's not going to, you know, uh, factor in the lows or highs, etc. But if you want to do that, so anytime it's just any hit that's uh, high in volume, you can uh, do the entire spectrum. But I like to do filter compensated personally. I think it's just filter where it'll just uh, 
uh, calculate the part that's filtered, but it's not compensated for volume. So I think filter compensate is the best. And of course, if you want to find out what everything else do, you can click in here and there's explanations. There's advanced stuff in here where you can really get into this. But I think in general, that's probably enough. Okay, so that's a clean example, but let me actually show you why you want to do uh, the stuff with the threshold. So here I have a jazz example. So you can watch here and see how much gain reduction it's doing when I'm not hitting, you know, the strings hard. Like this. No gain reduction there, and now this. And that's exactly what we want. The lighter hits aren't affected at all, and then the harder hits are. And let's do one with a distorted example. So I'm going to switch here, uh, switch all my sounds up. Okay, so here's a distorted example. I'll let you listen to this. That's all right, but it seems to have too much bass. So those palm mutes sometimes create like this low bass rumble that I don't want. And so you'll probably notice that if you play heavy metal. I'm not a super big heavy metal player, but you know, every once in a while I, I like to play that. I got the seven string out for this one. So what we're gonna do is take that low end and we're gonna cut it using a low shelf. So let's double click this. So one is just like a low shelf here. Actually, you can turn the wet dry. There we go. So you can see it's a low shelf and you can adjust things like this. Okay. And I'm just going to do this and try to find those bass frequencies. So that seems pretty good. So I thought at like six decibels, that's where it's like, okay, it cut it off. It's not too bad, but it did get rid of that bass. So that's what I'm going to aim for. I want six decibels of gain reduction in this bottom low pass filter. So right click it again. We'll do the exact same thing. Leave all this where it is. Turn down the RMS rate a little bit. Set the release to about 100 decibels or so, or sorry, 100 milliseconds, sorry. Uh, turn the th threshold up, everything else should be okay, and let's just listen to it and adjust the threshold. And if you look here, you'll see this little arrow will give you a hint on where your threshold is, so you can use this you know, visually. And let's do dynamics, let's do around like six or so. There we go. And now let's adjust the threshold. <laughs> Okay, so there you have it. So you see on the harder hits, it's bringing this down, bringing the volume down to the lower frequencies. And on the other hits, it's not. So I'll play it one time without, and then I'll turn it on. So there you go. That kind of lets you hear what it's doing. If you can't hear that, maybe you're using like a cheaper speakers. I'll kind of exaggerate it. So here's another thing. You see this, you can just pull this down and this will actually do more. So instead of using the threshold inside there, you can just pull this down also. So I'll do an exaggerated version so you can actually hear what it's doing a little bit more clearly. That's a very exaggerated version, so I wouldn't do that. I would set it someplace maybe in between. So whatever you feel fit, you can do that. And if I wanted to do the opposite, let's say another band, like let's say band four, I can do that, the exact same thing, except maybe I want to bring out these frequencies. So do the exact same thing here. 
set the threshold quickly. And now I'm going to turn the dynamics up because I want these to kind of pop out. So have everything set, play it. So, you see, it's really like pumping up those upper mids when it's hitting and bringing down the uh, low end. So it's kind of popping out more. So I'll let you hear it before and then I'll kind of in the middle, I'll turn it on. There you go. I kind of left some of those uh, finger slides in there, which I, I didn't want to do. I could edit those out. But you get the idea. So you can do this to bring out certain parts of the spectrum. And although it's cool to just use EQ sometimes, sometimes it's not so good because you think, like, ah, I don't want to bring that out all the time. I want it to work dynamically. So with this, you can do that. So hopefully this answered the question for someone and gives you some ideas of things you can do. If you like this, leave me a comment down below, give me a thumbs up, and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Until next time, see you.